Personally, music for me is, I suppose, a way to incorporate everything that I've experienced in my life. When I first started playing music, I, well, I don't know the exact age because I always kind of played music, but I started officially playing an instrument when I was five, when I picked up the violin. And they gave me the little violin, and they told me this is the small version, so I thought that was the small cello. So I was like, okay, here we go, we're about to play. Money, you've got lots of friends. I played more the piano we had in my house just to play music. I didn't care. I didn't want to actually study. I didn't want to do the work. I just wanted to have the fun, you know. I just wanted to play music. My mom put me in this program for like poor inner city black kids. It's called the Cultural Recreation Band. And basically I got in there and these these guys who were actually like seasoned jazz musicians kind of scared me into being serious. You know, because like I came in, I was like, yeah, I'm writing and I'm composing and I'm doing all this great stuff and I just want to play, I just want to play. And they kind of like ripped everything that I had apart and said, okay, if you're, if you're serious, this is, this is what you have to do. I first came across the double bass right around the time that I decided I didn't want to play violin anymore. Um, it wasn't expressive and I was stuck. So I went into school, I decided I'm going to tell my teacher today. And that same day, or maybe a couple days before, there was a bass my school had just bought. It was just sitting in the music room. So I picked it up and I just played like, I mean I just was trying to first of all just play a note, which was impossible. Because if you've played violin for 11 years and you try to play bass, it's like your body rejects. It's like no, you know. So. I picked it up and I played that boom, goon, 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 except slower and much uglier. And at the same time, music teacher came and he said, oh, you're gonna play bass, huh? And I was like, well, I mean, no. But then, what really did it, what really kicked my butt into shape was this old blues band. Everybody in it was like at least 65. They heard about me from the piano player. I don't know why the piano player was talking about me because there were tons of amazing bass players in my hometown. But I went one night when they were playing, they played every Sunday. And I went down, sat, sat in for a song I played. I guess they liked the groove. I mean, the notes weren't great. That's all that matters, though, really, from the bass, is the, the feel. And I had a good feel. That's all I could do. I started playing with them every Sunday. And, you know, we'd be playing on the stage, and I wouldn't know what to do. But I had to figure out what to do, because there were people listening. And these old guys were like, you know, I admired them so much. They've been doing it for like 60 years. Not that long, but you understand what I mean. And so, on the bandstand, they'd you know this tune? You know, I thought about you. I'm like, no, I don't know it. I'm like, okay, one, two, and I have to like figure it out right away. So that probably was the most like, the scariest thing and the best thing for me because I had to, I had to play. I didn't want to lose it. I realized then like what an opportunity it was to play with such like history. And so it kicked my butt and I just, I, I tried and I tried and I go home and like learn the songs and go home and try to listen to the bass lines. I didn't have the theory, but that's what made me, that's what made me start playing, like playing the bass. So I got to go to Berkeley only because I was going to college for classical bass and a little bit of jazz. And the teacher there said, you know, Spencer, I think you should go to, to Berkeley. I had no clue what Berkeley was, but he kept he kept on me, kept on me, kept on me. And I'm like that with, with older people that I respect musically. I don't want them to get mad at me, so I'll just I did what he said, but I tried to kind of do it too late. So I finally called Berkeley, and I ended up happening to get an audition. I, I didn't apply, I didn't do anything. They just gave me an audition. I don't know why. So I went up an audition. In the audition, as soon as I had finished playing. 
the guy told me, I'm gonna give you a scholarship. I said, cool. Because I, I didn't have money to go to college. I had a scholarship to my other school. And move all the way across the country, I didn't think it was possible. So I ended up, I had no idea how I was gonna go still, even though I had a scholarship. So my friend suggested to have a benefit concert. So I had a benefit concert, raise money to buy a plane ticket, to send my base out there, have some money for food, and hopefully a place to live. I went out to Berkeley, stayed with a family friend, and that's how I first arrived. The reason that I could stay is because my first semester there, I'd been there like two and a half months. Patty Austin held an audition for, for a bass player. She was doing this little tour. And I went and auditioned. And I knew at the audition I got the, the, the job because she kept having me come play, kept having me play. I played more than any other bass player. And the money that I earned going on the road with her that year made it so I could afford to stay. And then from then on, I think when people found out, oh, you're playing with Patty Austin, people started to give me a chance to play. And then people wanted to help me because they figured, well, if Patty Austin thinks she can play, maybe she can play. So from then, I, I kept meeting more musicians, and it was so competitive. And I wanted to prove myself, you know, because I always had a fear that I would, I would get extra opportunities just because I was a female. And that, of everything, that made me so angry, and it really it scared me. I never wanted to have anything just because I'm a girl, just because I'm black, or just because of anything that I didn't do, like, that I didn't make. So when I got there and I realized people were looking at me like, oh, she's a girl, oh, she's different, oh, she has short hair, she has crazy hair, da da da. So that made me want to, like, play. So if I ever, if it ever happened, pray that it didn't, but if I ever got in a place, I got there not for my, my work, I could prove, like, well, I worked anyway, goddammit. This is what I can do. There was a project at Berkeley. They decided to make a CD produced by Gary Burton and Pat Metheny. So, uh, we were recording with Pat Metheny. This was going on in my mind. but. You know, obviously not all the time. So I was really enjoying the, the project. He was amazing. Amazing person, amazing musician, amazing ear. He just, it blew my mind, because I admire him so much, and to be able to work with him. So we finished recording my song, um, the song called Life of Ripple that I wrote, and I'd sang, I sang it and I played bass. And after we finished, he came in. Everybody had left the studio. They were in the control room. And he came in and he said, you know, I spent a second, can I talk to you for a second? And he said, you know, I want to ask you something. What do you want to do? And I was like, uh, what do you mean, exactly? This Pat with me comes and asks you, and I, want, I want to play with you, of course, you know. So he said, what do you want to do? And I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, in terms of your life, what do you want to do with your life? And I said, well, uh, to be honest, I just, I'm actually really torn because I told him the whole thing. I, I'm thinking that I want to go study political science or something because I don't want to just be a musician and watch things happen that I have the ability to think about in a creative way. Like I want to use my creativity to make a bigger change, not just in music. And he said, well, okay. I meet lots of great musicians every day, all the time, and they're all amazing. And they're great. I'm not saying that you're the best, but you have an X factor, he said. You have this X factor. And I can tell by hearing you write and hearing you sing and hearing you play bass that if you decide to do music and you decide to really commit yourself, I think the possibilities are limitless. And I think if you decide to do that, you can just go. I, I think there's really no stopping you if that's what you decide to do. So just think about it. And I said, well, you know, if you tell me that, I mean, how am I going to say no? So when you told me that, I said, that must have been like a sign from God, you know? Voice and bass are, to me, like the two extremes in music. You have the bass, which is the bottom, the, the, the meat, the potatoes of music, and the voice, which is always the top layer, usually, typically. And so, playing both at the same time is really cool because it keeps, like when I'm playing, my brain is always like equally divided between, okay, I am the voice on the top that's delivering what's the message in this song or this, melody or whatever but at the same time you're still I'm still connected with the foundation and the bottom and it's it's really strange to do those at the same time 
Because in a way, it's like those are all you need. You need the you need the, the message and you need the carrier of the message, you know, and the bass is kind of like what delivers it. Amazing to, to be able to command, and I mean, it's a real challenge, but it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to kind of live in those two tiers all the time. Um, and then if for any reason, like if there's a moment where I'm just playing bass, it's like, oh man, like all of my senses go down to that level, or like, I don't know, however you want to describe it, it's not like superior or inferior, but suddenly like I'm, I'm a bass player, it's like I'm thinking and hearing all these things as bass, and then when I switch into the voice, it's like, oh man, this is like this area, it's so amazing. And then when both together, it's just, I mean, every like membrane and nerve ending in my brain is like completely occupied so it's, it's difficult but it's amazing like it's really fulfilling to be able to do like all of those stuff together and i know that i'm like supporting myself and it's it's amazing <laughs> i love it it's the best <laughs> it's hard to really say where i see my music going because for me it's just exciting to be a part of the whole the whole movement of jazz right now, I just want to keep writing and keep getting better and better and better. I want to become like a master bass player and I want to be an, a great singer um, and a great composer. So I kind of want to leave it up to however, whatever happens in the next 30 years and whatever like my fellow musicians go through, obviously I'll go through too. I want to be a part of, of that whole process. <laughs>